Isn't this wonderful to be here for all of us to be honoring the fabulous Mr. Al Mann? Join me in giving him a round of applause. Al, you have meant so much to so many of us. There are so many different people who want to speak and say a few words about your absolute greatness. And I'm going to ask the incomparable, legendary Dr. Fran Kaufman to begin. First of all, it's wonderful to be with all of you and in this amazing city with this beautiful view, but looking at you is even more phenomenal, Al. Um, hey, I know. That, we, we, we had a little thing the first time I met Claude. I told her I loved Al and I think she took it wrong. <laughs> Um, I can remember the first days I met you and how much you influenced every aspect of my career, my thinking, my outlook, and ultimately where I ended up in the company that you gave birth to. Um, what you have done for all of us, Al, is incomparable, immeasurable, and absolutely wonderful. And it's not just that you've been brilliant and creative and visionary, you have also been the most fun ever. The parties that Al gave all those years were the absolutely best, and um, we will always remember all the positive, wonderful, incredible things that you've done, and you will be in our hearts forever. You will be in our uh, pancreases forever. <laughs> And, um, and we love you. So thank you for being with us all these years. Thank you, my dear. Okay. I know everybody wants to say so much. We're going to have the common theme of our love for you, and that's what's the most important thing. So thank keep it going. So okay. Claude, I can say I love him, and it's okay. <laughs> no problem. Absolutely a bromance, Neil. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's an honor to be here and to stand up here and, and share with you the wonderful 20 years plus that I've had with Al and all of us have had with Al. It's not just me. It's not just his employees. It's been everybody that has been associated with Al and living the spirit of what he put in all of us to never stop dreaming the dream until there's a day that there is a cure. But in the meantime, we all have responsibilities to bring new technologies, new drugs to the marketplace in order to alleviate some of the challenges of diabetes. He is the epitome of success. And I each day wake up and say, man, if I could only be more like Al, uh, I would achieve even greater success than and what we have achieved to date. So, uh, Al, you're an inspiration to me and every day of my life, I'm sure, as I look out over this audience. Uh, many of us share that, that same inspirational belief in you, and, and keep it going. This is fun. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. And we love you, Al. And as you all know, Al is a man of action. I met Al about 15 years ago, actually on a recommendation from someone at Terry Gregg's company at the time. And I get a phone call from Al in, in, in the morning. He said, I've heard your name, and I have these six companies that I'm trying to bring together under some type of leadership. Eventually, we ended up with, with three companies. So I said, I knew of Al because he had stolen some people from me from my previous company, but that's basically how I knew Al. And so I said, Mr. Mann, when would you like to meet? And he said, what about lunch today at Mary Callender's? <laughs> so a man of action and a man of conviction. And the one thing I have learned, have worked with Al over the last 14 or close to 15 years, that 
that I may challenge Al, but it's always with great respect because his tenacity, his success is phenomenal. And it's been a wonderful, inspiring time. And I have to say also, Claude has contributed to that uh, inspiring time because what you've done for Al and how you've, you have taken care of Al and your love of Al has given him a tremendous life and a tremendous success. And what we're seeing today, of course, in terms of Afresa, Al knew, Al told us what it would be even long before the rest of us maybe were convinced that it would be the case. But, you know, he is the example of tenacity. He's the example of what success is all about. And usually, as Al does when we've been out to universities and talk about success, the, f the first least three slides basically says money, money, and money. That is critical in terms of being successful. But Al, you are a legend, and you will be a legend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Al. I just want you to know I met Al in 21 years ago. I went to work for Al straight out of public accounting, never having worked at a company to be his CFO at Minimed. And honest to goodness, I had no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> and, I would, and my office was right next to his, which you never want, as he will tell you, you never want your office next to Al's. But as I now am CEO at Dexcom, there's some great lessons I learned from Al. One is Al's vision. You know, most companies have a strategic plan of some kind. Ours at Dexcom, Terry is my new executive chairman boss. He never had to do a plan at Dexcom, but he made me do one. But it was only three years. Al didn't do three. Al didn't do five. Al didn't do 10. We had an 11 year plan. And Al didn't look at computers in those days. He made me print out 600 pages and put a divider for every year, every product line, everything. He would take the book home. He would mark up pricing eight years and say, Kevin, your implantable pump is too cheap and eight years from now you need to up prices $200. And he would read the book in that detail. When we signed the lease with Northridge, he brought it back to me for a canning treatment. It took me a while to figure out what he'd done. I walked in, Al, we have this land for 100 years. I, I'm not going to be here. I know you are. But I wasn't. His vision's amazing. His brilliance is just an inspiration to us all. Al has never met a deal he would not look at. No matter who it is or where it is, he will listen. Every meeting is worth taking. And the things that have resulted from those meetings and those discussions have been marvelous. And finally, I just want to thank Al for the many opportunities he's not only presented to me. You could fill this hotel with children who've gone to college based on Al's generosity. So thank you, my friend. Well, everyone here knows how wonderful Al Mann is. Mr. Mann I has been sort of a hero to all of us for a long time. And quite frankly, I was wondering if this if inhaled insulin was ever going to get on the market. And I thought that um, rather than me say how wonderful Mr. Mann is, that I would, I would let uh, some of my patients, and I just did this while I was sitting there, speak uh, instead. Um, this is a week after having started it. The Afreza is amazing, truly. Uh, are the 12 unit cartridges available yet? Another one here. Yes, for the first time, the insulin is actually predictable and you're not waiting for three to five hours afterward to see what's lingering around and what it's going to do. Whether it's going to cause hypoglycemia or wondering, is it high because I didn't take enough units or because it hasn't peaked yet? Should I take more or wait a couple hours? And then I take another shot and end up with a hypo. I would say my, anecdotally, my post meal lows have been cut in half since starting a present. That's just two of the totally unsolicited emails I've gotten within a couple of weeks of starting people on a Fresa. And it's amazing 
how few phone calls I'm getting. I'm getting these wonderful emails, whereas before, after starting people on insulin, it's always a lot of questions and what do I do and, and insulin stacking and one thing and another. This has just been so wonderful and it's really made life so much easier for people with diabetes and I really am loving it. Um, for my patients. I'm speaking not for myself, but of course I love it too, but for my patients. And that's, I'm, I know that's what you care about too, is the people you're helping. So thank you. So I think I have to appreciate that I'm probably one of the uh, newest members and a latecomer perhaps to the Al Man fan club. But if you'll accept me, Al, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be a member officially. Is that, is that OK? Hey, OK. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the privilege just a couple of weeks ago of being on the stage with Terry Gregg and presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award to Al at the JDRF Gala in Los Angeles. And uh, we called Al on stage and presented the beautiful, huge glass uh, jug. And Al took the podium. And I've told many people this story, even in the last few weeks. So what would someone do being given a Lifetime Achievement Award, reflecting back on a career of inventions in pacemakers and artificial eyes and ears and insulin pumps? And Al pulls out his notes. He pauses. He asks for the slides to appear on the screen. And he gives a compelling 15-minute lecture on the value of a Frezza. <laughs> <laughs> the quintessential inventor who loves that latest child and wants to see it succeed. And as I said that night, what I take away from the interactions that we've had is that Al is driven, maybe unlike some other inventors whose faith is in the technology that they've invented, but Al in the faith that the technology he's invented is going to benefit patients. And that's really what sustains us and that's what will always drive us is that shared desire to see this product reach enough people to deliver the value that we know it can have. So thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for this partnership. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. I hope there's room on the bandwagon right behind you there, Andrew. Uh, I am new to, the band, to your fan club in some respects, but you've had a huge impact on me and you didn't even know it. I went on my first Minimed pump in 1999 and my son went on his first pump when he was a year and a half old. That was 2006. Um, you've given a lot to me and my family. You've made my life better and healthier. And it's not just about, well, it's a nice way to, to deliver insulin. You've also delivered hope. And when I saw Al two weeks ago at that JDRF event, and I shook his hand just to say hello and say thank you, and I told him, I said, you know, you've meant a lot to me and you've helped me, you've helped my son. He held my hand, he looked me in the eye, and he says, we're going to do even more for him. He said, we have even better things coming. Right? That's hope. And I know when Al says it, he means it. Right? I can hold him to that. So Al, on behalf of all the people that you may not have even met yet, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'm actually nervous up here because I think speaking about Al is, is a privilege. And I really thought about what to say. And I, I said, well, what, what kind of phrases could I come up with to describe Al, and I've heard some of the phrases earlier. The first one, I think at top of the list, is rugged determinism. The second is persistent tenacity. The third is, yeah, Claude's agreeing with me. Uh, the third is, if there's a will, there is a way. And the last is a mind that diligently does not rest. Kelly could give you some competition there, but um, it's so true. Now, you know, 
I developed type 1 diabetes when I was a kid. I, I benefit from insulin pump therapy. So have millions of other. It's, dri it's driven sensor technology. It's driven the development of artificial pancreas, which, which has and will uh, benefit so many people with diabetes. And I, I think the best way I can describe it is you started an avalanche of technology that is really geared towards helping primarily people with type 1. And you know what, Al, it's kind of cool to have type 1 diabetes these days. It's not a death sentence anymore. The rest of those non-type 1s, they're, they're a bunch of losers, you know? <laughs> and you know, talk about Afreza. Talk about persistent tenacity, getting that product approved. And it has met an unmet need. Uh, in type 1 diabetes and type 2. And uh, even though this is a diabetes meeting, um, you know, I've been to some of your events up in LA with mankind developments in the cochlear implant, implant area. And I'll tell you what, when you see some of the individuals that you've helped who have been born deaf or been deaf most of their adult lives, and then they're up there talking and, and hearing, it, it is, talk about dramatic. I mean, talk about life-changing events. I'm on site. Well, yeah, I was getting to that. <laughs> sight too. I, I think hearing is almost sometimes more important than sight. But I mean, people don't realize the technology outside of type 1 diabetes. Now here's the point. I mean, I, all of us in this room help people with diabetes in one capacity or other. You know, yes, I run Take and Control Your Diabetes. I see patients. But I have diabetes. I have a self-interest. But Al does not have diabetes. His kids don't have type 1 diabetes. You're not deaf or blind yet you selflessly uh, use your rugged you know, determinism to pick a, 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 a metabolic defect, uh, find a cure, and bring it to the finish line. And I, and I mean finish. You know, there's just the way you have taken products and fought off the FDA <laughs> is impressive. And the last couple things I'd like to say is that people who don't know you you know, they just see Al Mann up there, the big businessman, and they, they don't know what a, what a warm, sweet, and generous person you are, and a great sense of humor. Even when you're not feeling that great like days tie today, you're, you're, you have a good sense of humor. And lastly, I think there's never been a statement that is so true, the one I'm gonna say in a second, that relates to you. And I'm sure you've all heard this, behind every great man there's a great woman. And uh, Claude, there's no way this old geezer could have done what he did without the support that you, that you have given him. And uh, most of us that know you too, they, we, we realize that's true, but it, it, thank you for helping Al achieve what he has and supporting him. And he's told me personally so many times that you're a godsend. So thank you very much. I may be the oldest person to speak so far, and the one who probably listening to when everybody met Al knows Al the longest. I met Al in the early 1980s. He was running a company called Pacesetter. You were there too, Brian. And um, he, you know, people don't realize that before he got into medical things, one of the things Al did was be in the aerospace industry. And he had developed the heat shields that were on the Gemini and Apollo missiles that went into space. And through that, he got to know a company called Parker Hannafin, who handled the fluid administration in space. And Pace Setter and Parker Hannafin formed a partnership to make an insulin pump. It was called Micromed, and it had the Pace Setter fluid system and the electronics and other stuff that, that um, excuse me, the Parker Hannafin flu system and the, and the electronics that, that Pace Setter made. But there got to be a problem with that. This is the early 1980s. And the problem was that Pace Setter, excuse me, that Parker Hannafin was great in handling fluids in outer space. But they forgot that on this planet, we have air. And an air bubble in their fluid system shut it down. And it didn't work on this planet. It would have worked great up there. But Al wasn't to be deterred. He said, we'll make 
a different system for, for delivering that, and he changed it from MicroMed to MiniMed, and you all know the rest of the story. And um, in 1988 or 89, somewhere around there, Al uh, asked me, would I be willing to chair his clinical advisory board for, for MiniMed? And I said, sure, we shook hands on that. I emphasize that for a moment because as time went on, I chaired the advisory board from then until the company was sold to uh, Medtronic in 2001. And along the way, Al also asked me to be on the board of directors. And then when the company was sold, I moved on. And I got a letter from the lawyers that were now Medtronic, which said, we want to remind you that even though you don't have a confidentiality agreement. All I had was a handshake with Al. You have a common law obligation not to disclose any confidential information that you know. Now, my wife, who at the time was still a judge, now she's a retired judge as arbitration media. She said to me, there is no such thing. I said, it doesn't matter. I don't know anything confidential, and I wouldn't disclose anything if I did. But I thought it was interesting that it was all because these days nobody signs a contract without all sorts of agreements. With Al, it was just a handshake. And we became great friends after that. I stayed at Al's home, I don't know how many dozens of times over the years. And in the early years, Al would do one thing, and I want to make a toast to Al. I don't have to worry about Al because in those years it would be December and Al would say, this is the 21st drink I've had this year. <laughs> he'd count them, he'd tell you exactly how many drinks he'd had up till that point in the year. It was amazing. And it, it would be something like a 20 or one year, I think he got to 51. Was 51 your biggest year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, we went through this all the time. How many drinks had Al had? So we don't have, Al doesn't have to drink with us because he wouldn't anyway. But I'd like to give a toast to Al Man and all the things he's done for mankind with one end, as well as for mankind with two ends. Al. <laughs> How many amazing sentiments in honor of you, Al, and in honor of you, Claude. So there are two that I have left. Adam Brown, who is 26 years old, just has sent me over something to read in honor of you. And he is right now moderating a panel at the JDRF Closed Loop, which we could all say is really thanks to all of the work that you did, Al. So, I'm going to don them and read this from Adam, um, who leads technology at Close Concerns, who writes for Diatribe, and who many of us in the room are very honored to know as well. I've had the privilege of following Elle's work over the past five years, working at Close Concerns and at Diatribe, whether it was covering the pump industry or listening to every mankind, mankind earnings call. I think Al has taught me three absolutely critical lessons. First, true conviction. The story of Afreza is an incredible story of persistence, of one man's certainty that it would work, that it would get on the market, and it would have helped so many patients. He just knew, he knew beyond the shadow of doubt that Afreza was so important. Naysayers aside, cash difficulties aside, investor skepticism aside, even a complete, compl a complete response letter or two aside, it didn't matter. Al persevered. Every earnings call just oozed with his confidence and conviction that this product had to come to market. And if you look at every patient experience with it, as Dr. Bohannon and so many others have shown us. We see that Afreza has been transformative for so many. I have so much respect for Al's deep conviction. Persevering in the face of challenge is perhaps the most important quality people with diabetes need to have, since every single day managing our blood sugars is a challenge. Adam's in his 11th year with diabetes. I think Al's career speaks to man who, man who overcomes challenge again and again and again. Perhaps even someone who seeks out challenge. 
simply to laugh in the face of it because he has done it so many times before. Second, Al has taught me about loving your work. I hope that when I'm 90 years old, I'm still doing something every day that I love. I think that for people like Al and Terry Gregg and Kevin Sayer, oh, this is so nice, and Kelly Close, and other type A visionary diabetes superheroes, working on something important and something meaningful every day is not a job. It's called living a fulfilling life. So Al, thank you for reminding me of that. We all only get one shot at this life, so we might as well spend it doing something that we love. Third and foremost, making an impact. As a person with diabetes, I've benefited tremendously from Al's work commercializing the insulin pump at Minimed. I got on a pump a year after diagnosis and been a novel one ever since. A few months ago, I was having a particularly frustrating day of glycemic control. I felt like I was doing everything right, and the glucose numbers just weren't reflecting it. Like any patient, I found something to blame. In this case, my pump and infusion set. And I said, I'm so done with my insulin pump. So I went back to MDI, and I lasted 24 hours. I forgot what a burden, what a hassle, what a, what a serious pain it is to take six injections per day. And not only was it burdensome, but my numbers were more out of whack. Wow, was that truly eye-opening. It's like they say, you don't realize how much something means to you till it's gone. Al has made a tremendous difference in my life and so many other people's lives in bringing technology like the insulin pump to market in such a big way. I really missed my insulin pump after only less than a day. Much more importantly, Al has paved the way to close the loop, something that is not only not going to is, that is not only going to improve the quality of life for so many people, but it, it is going to save countless lives from severe hypoglycemia, from dead in bed, and from long-term complications with hyperglycemia. So Al, says Adam, as a person with diabetes, as an aspiring professional working in this field, and as a human being, I say thank you. Thank you for persevering in the face of challenge. Thank you for showing me what it means to live a fulfilling life doing work that you love, and thank you for reminding me that we are all here to make an impact. You are such a model for us all. So just a last few words of my own. I've known so many people here for so many years, many of you not even Johnny, actually, um, but many of you here knew me in all of the years that I had all this incredibly severe hypoglycemia. You know, I was in the emergency room 24 times in 12 years exactly before I met Mr. L. Mann. I, I had been in the emergency room so many times, I knew what it was always like. I would wake up and I would see the paramedic and it would be so depressing. And Al, the fact that you changed life for me like that and so many, many people that you don't even know, all of us patients are so incredibly indebted to you. So that was what it was like for me meeting Al Mann for the very first time. But the story of how this man has affected me isn't the story at all really, because he's affected everyone. Evidenced by the upwards of 90 honors and awards bestowed on him so far in his life. He's funded 17 companies in his career, profoundly enhancing the lives of those who are blind, paralyzed, or suffer from life-threatening diseases like cancer, heart disease, and of course, diabetes. He's an advocate, and he's also a pioneer. Such a pioneer in healthcare, either creating or playing an early role in the development of technologies like pacemakers, the artificial pancreas, 
and much more recently, having such a strong role in inhaled insulin. And he's a believer in education, evidenced by the fellowships funded in his name through the Alfred E. Mann Institute for Biomedical Engineering at the University of Southern California. Directly or indirectly, Alamanna is a part of my daily life. I, of course, treasure every moment that I get to interact, or to get to interact with him and Claude. But the words of the diatribe team write, and the events we attend are shaped and fueled by his contributions to science and the diabetes field. And his career has allowed me to provide opportunities for my own team of recent graduates to learn and become part of the next generation of medical leaders. The ones that will hopefully put to rest the conversations that we're all having here this weekend. The man deserves every award he's won, plus some. And this reception is our plus some. Claude, thanks for sharing some of Al's time with you and Dolce, and his wonderful mind with us for so many years. And to think that this whole time that John has thought it was rough himself. You have given up so much of Al's time, and we are so incredibly grateful to you for that, for you making so much transformation in diabetes happen. And Al, thank you for being such a leader and mentor and inspiration to us all. Without you, I might not be here today. And I'm sure that sentiment holds true for countless others in the room. With that, join me in a wonderful round of applause for Claude and Al Mann. I am very deeply honored by this evening. What happened is that, uh, uh, that Kelly and Steve Edelman were going to honor me tomorrow night but tomorrow night in Los Angeles, uh, we're doing a, my daughter, my uh, wife Claude is doing a, uh, a concert uh, in honor of my foundation uh, with Andre Buccelli and David Foster. And so I have to go back tonight. <laughs> but when I said I couldn't come tomorrow night, they arranged this and I'm deeply honored that all you incredibly busy people have taken the time to come here uh, for this evening and I want to thank you all. But you know, I got involved with the Fresa uh, in, in 1999. Uh, we, we were at Minimed and we were uh, trying to stabilize large drugs uh, and, uh, and I from my many mid days with pumps, I learned that, that first of all, that the biggest problem facing the world today uh, is uh, is diabetes, and we've got to find some way of stemming the pandemic. Uh, and interestingly, uh, I learned uh, that the biggest problem in insulin therapy uh, was the poor kinetics uh, of uh, of the uh, prandial insulins. And so I told my team at Minimed, I said, try to make a formulation of insulin monomers using this technology. And we did. And when I saw the data in, in, in this curve, it sells, tells the whole story. What we're doing is creating an insulin that I can't say this, but anecdotally I'll say you can't see a pencil line between a Fresa uh, kinetics uh, and, and pancreatic kinetics. And that tells the whole story. And it will change diabetes therapy. People have got to learn it. Uh, but when I saw this curve, I said, that is something I must do. Because, you know, I don't need to work anymore. I'm an old man. Uh, but I got to say 
that when you see something that could change the world's greatest problem, address the world's greatest need in, in medic medicine, this is it, and it tells the whole story. And thank you all for coming here, and I'm honored that you're here. Thank you.